Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the second part of this uh, introduction to synthesizers course. Today we are going to be going over modulators and evolving sounds. So just a brief introduction to modulators. So a modulator is a device used to automatically alter any parameter of our synthesizer without any user input. So this serves in a way to act as a extra pair of hands to kind of turn the knobs that you're not able to uh, only having two hands. So yeah, uh, they are an exceptionally useful tool and can act as an extra pair of hands where need be, although that's a bit misleading because they can act as many different pair of hands. So modulators come in many various forms, uh, but today we are going to be focusing on uh, LFOs or low frequency oscillators envelopes and some other forms of modulation that may be useful to you. So we'll start off with the LFO, so that stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. So an LFO is an oscillator that moves back and forth uh, as a wave normally would or an oscillator normally would. Uh, it's a frequency that we can't hear, so we would typically describe this as subsonic because it normally operates uh, at a range that's below 20 hertz so uh, 20 hertz is normally the lowest that we are able to hear and 20,000 is typically the highest um, so because we can't hear it we can use this slow back and forth motion to modulate parameters back and forth so LFOs are the most uh, popular source of modulation and uh, all synthesizers come with them in some capacity it's very, very rare that you'll see any synthesizer, especially a subtractive synthesizer, without a LFO. So you can assign an LFO to modulate almost any parameter on Serum and in Massive X. So any form of uh, knob, parameter, anything like that, you can modulate with an LFO. So on Massive X, uh, we find the LFO selection down here. So we have L4, L5, L6. We also have L8 and L9 just over there. So here, this is where we then find our modulator panel. So here we have the first LFO, which is right there. It's called a switcher LFO. Same here, switcher LFO. And here we have a random LFO. We can uh, assign these to different types of LFOs if we want to. So if we want to have uh, three switcher LFOs, we can do that. If we want to have two random LFOs and one switcher, back and so on. So yeah, here we can see the uh, LFO 4. Um, no, sorry, LFO 1. It's called L4 there because it's the fourth modulator. This will be the second LFO or L5. And here would be L6. So in Serum, we find our LFO selection just here. And uh, each of the little circles there tells us how many uh, parameters that LFO is assigned to. And here we can see the full selection of the LFO. So LFOs primarily have three modes. So you have a trigger mode, an envelope mode, and off. So trigger means the LFO will begin its oscillation at the start of a note. So if you press any note, it'll start from the beginning. Uh, envelope means that the LFO will not repeat back and forth. So it will only go through its phase uh, once. And uh, it will only cycle once every time a note is hit. Off means it will cycle on regardless of any input. So if you want to sync up your LFO to your BPM in your door, you would select off because you want it to be uh, synced to the grid and not synced to whether a note is being pressed or not. So moving on, uh, the next form of um, modulator is the envelope. So last week we looked at the voice envelope or the amp envelope and how we can use that to change the character of the sound. So if you remember, we went over attack, decay, sustain and release. And it just so happens that modulator envelopes work in the same way. However, we are not changing the amplitude of the actual voice. So we're not, we're not changing how it goes from zero to loud, etc. 
we are simply using it in a way to modulate the parameters. So don't worry if you don't understand what I'm saying, we'll get onto this very shortly. So an attack on a mod envelope would measure how long it takes for the modulation to reach its peak on the parameter and decay down to the sustain value and so on, so on. So if you have a gradually, uh, if you have a long attack, it means that whatever parameter you assign that to, it'll take that amount of time to reach its full modulation on said parameter. So if we just go over here, if we load up Serum, if we load up the second envelope here, then we bring up quite a long attack. Let's say we want to modulate the wavetable. So if I just bring up a random thing here, uh, Juno, I quite, like, I quite like working with Juno. We can then assign that to the wavetable position there. We can maybe bring that down just there a little bit. And what this does here, this attack, measures how long it takes for this knob here to go from there all the way around to there. So let's have a listen. So you can hear there, we have that slow shift upwards. If we want to bring the decay down, you'll see the knob working there. Maybe difficult to see, but we have this uh, little blue dot just moving there. And there we go. We can also lengthen the release as well. So the attack is a measure of how long it takes for the uh, parameter to go from there to there. Decay is a measure of how long it takes to go from the top value down to the sustain value. So in this case, it's around there. And release is a measure of how long it takes to go from the sustain value all the way down to the starting value there. So again, we'll just take a listen so you can hear the modulator in effect. And there you go. So we can use this in conjunction with the voice, uh, with the voice envelope. So we can get that to match roughly the same. So you can see there, as the, uh, as the sound gets louder, it also changes on the wavetable position there as well. So envelopes are more ideal for modulations that you don't want to occur back and forth. So if it's kind of like a one-time modulation, then that would work uh, really well. So if you have like a pluck sound and you want to really change the character of it at that initial attack, this will be a great way to do it. So on Massive X, you can find your modulation envelopes here. As you can see, modulation envelope and exciter envelope. And on Serum, you can find them all just there as well. So let's move on to user input modulation. So user input modulation is a term that we will use going forward to describe modulators that are not controlled, no, sorry, that are controlled by the users and not controlled by an external factor. So such examples here would include the mod wheel, uh, aftertouch, which is a function I will get into shortly, and the macro function on Serum. And you can also assign note velocity and pitch to different parameters meaning that hitting a note at a different force will give you a different sound or playing at a different pitch will sound different depending on what you modulate. So what I mean here, so we'll, we will use Serum as an example here. Let's say we want our mod wheel to, uh, to alter the level of this oscillator. So we'll bring that down there. And we use this little blue circle there to change the, uh, the level of modulation. So then if we want to have our mod wheel controller parameter, we will simply drag where it says mod over there and we can now change that ourselves. If we want to use velocity to change the level, we would simply do the same, drag velocity over there, select the range in which you want it to modulate. Now if we hit a note very quietly or very lightly, so should I say, you can see it's very quiet if we hit it quite forcefully. That's not really going to make much of a difference there because I've got a fairly long attack. So if I if I bring that down so you can just hear exactly what it is I'm doing. It's quite subtle. Um because I've probably not done too much there. Let me let me give you another example on the filter there. So if I uh if I want to bring, yeah, so we assign the velocity up to there. 
so at a lower velocity you can see the filter has more of an effect. Whereas if I wanted to hit it harder, Yeah, so we can use velocity to uh, really change the uh, character of our sound. And you can also make it a lot more expressive this way too. And here we have uh, the note parameter. So if you wanted your note at the higher end of the keyboard to sound different than the ones at the lower. So for example, um, if you want your notes at the high end to have a bit more harmonic content in them and you want the low ones to be a bit more filtered you can assign them to the cutoff on your filter and so now if I play a note all the way up here I'm going to just briefly remove all this from the velocity so you can really see what's going on so you can see the lower down again So that is a good way to bring some extra character into your sound as well. Uh, as I said before, just to kind of make it a lot more expressive. So if we wanted to do this on massive, so we load up the uh, interface there. That's the wrong massive. I'm actually looking for massive X. And here we go. So if we wanted to assign the mod wheel, it's just up there. So let's say we want to assign this again to the uh, the cutoff. So we'd bring it down to there. We'd click on that, and we'd bring it all the way around where we want it to. So now I can control. I can control that now with the mod wheel. If we wanted to use aftertouch, so aftertouch is something which is uh, not very common on uh, MIDI controllers these days but um some of the new native instrument stuff uh definitely does definitely does use it so i can press down a chord and if i put down a bit more pressure and that is a form of modulation because uh, you're changing the sound you are modulating it so i'm going to remove the aftertouch there because uh, it can be quite frightening in the, in some regard if you're not if you're not quite expecting it you'd uh, if you forget roughly what it is you've assigned it to and then you press down a little bit harder it can uh, it can give you quite a bit of a shock so let's briefly go over how the LFOs work so the switch LFO here uh, you've got a bunch of different wave type selections you can have it moving in so we're just going to go for a basic sine wave here uh, here you can see the rate. At the moment it's currently on free time, which means that it's not bound to the BPM of your session. So I'm going to assign this LFO to the filter. So let's have a hear, let's have a listen to what this sounds like. That wah 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 is the LFO uh, doing what the LFO does. It's taking this parameter and it's moving it backwards and forwards at the frequency that we set it to. So it's about three times, well, three and a half times every second. We can bring this all the way down. I'm gonna bring that up just a little bit more so we can probably hear it a little bit better. So yeah, it's it's uh, it's another great way of adding an extra bit of character to your sound. We could bring it all the way up there too. And... You can bring some um, kind of tremolo in there. But 
But mainly for ambient and atmospheric stuff, I will bring this all the way down and I will use it in subtle little ways. So I'm gonna bring the filter down so it's not quite as harsh on the ears. He says. There we go. So you can really hear there that this sound uh, kind of evolves as time goes on. And you can use uh, different LFOs to further modulate stuff here. So if I wanted this one going all the way down, you'll have these two LFOs kind of competing and it'll be quite unpredictable what this uh, parameter is going to end up doing. So again, you've got all these different kind of waveforms that you can, uh, you can possibly choose from. Um, you've got a delay here which tells you uh, how long it takes before the LFO comes into effect at the start of a uh, key press. If you want your LFO to be synced up to your grid, you'll click on free here and sync. And now you've got this selector here, which gives you a lot of different time values. So now it will be synced up to your door. Or you can just have it, uh, have it just a normal, regular oscillator. Um, I tend to go for free because I like to dial in a sound just a little bit more. You can have it selected to loop. And yeah, you've got all sorts of uh, other different things in there as well. Using this here uh, is a good way to measure how long you want it to reach peak value and how long you want it to go down. So it's a bit like an envelope for the LFO. But without all the, um, without all the extra uh, parameters in there. So here you have... Uh, a way of defining where you want your LFO to move. So if you just want it to move in one direction, you can select uh, uni there. Or if you want it to move in both, moving back and forth, you have by there. So all the other parameters uh, we will be getting into in the future when we look at uh, modulators uh, in a more advanced setting. But that is how you would go about assigning and using your LFOs in Massive. So let's have a quick look at Serum. So our, our LFO tabs are just here. So we've got one, two, three, four. You can add in more. So let's say I want to use an LFO to modulate the uh, to modulate the detune there. So let's add in a couple of more voices there. Bring the blend down. So let's have a listen to how that sounds. So you can see there what that's doing is it's uh, rising up. It hits its peak value there. Yeah, and there we go. So it moves backwards and forwards. Uh, if we wanted to just have it at the trigger one out. So that will start every single time I hit the note. Or you can have it acting as an envelope. So you can see there, it doesn't keep on modulating it backwards and forwards. You can change the rates here. So this one here is typically uh, synced to the grid. However, you get a much kind of wider range of where you want it to, uh, of how long you want the duration of the modulation to be. So let me put this back on trigger there. So yeah, the uh, the LFOs on Serum tend to be a bit more um, accessible, I find. There's a lot more room for customization in there. And the visual representation of them is so, so good. And you can uh, you can change around the uh, the actual waveform as well. So if you want it to have a slow rise and a large dip like this, it sets up to one bar so you can hear what's happening. If you want it to hit its peak earlier like this. You can even add in more different sections like this as well. So 
There's just all sorts you can do with the LFOs in uh, Serum. And there's much more uh, customization just available. And as soon as you use up the main form, it does give you access to uh, more LFOs. So again, if you wanted to assign this to Serum, you simply click the cross there. Hover over whatever parameter you want to assign it to. So let's say we want to assign it to the resonance here on our filter. And let's say we don't want it to go all the way back and forth. So we click this little circle there. We bring this down. And now let's have a listen. So we can see there exactly what it's doing. So it just bumps the resonance up as soon as the wave hits its peak. So other forms of modulation. So Massive X does use other forms of modulation. So you get the performance modulation uh, modulators, the tracker modulators, and the voice randomizer. So tracker modulators work similarly to velocity and pitch, uh, but there's a more kind of practical range of uh, tools for modulation. So, and uh, yeah, the performance modulators allow for user assigned functions per an eight bar measure. So I'll quickly go over what that means because that was a lot of words. So you, you do have more sets of modulators here on Massive. So let's have a look at the performance tab here. So it's set over an eight bar measure. However, you can bring this, uh, this rate down all the way down so you can effectively have it lasting over 64 bars if you if you really wanted to so let's let's assign this here well, as you can see there look now it's moving really really slowly So if you wanted to change that, we get all these tools down here. So we can change uh, change that there. Just add in all the different stuff and so on. I believe this has uh, up to twenty four, yeah, up to twenty four different levels of um, modulation just there. So it's not it's not the full MIDI range. It's not one to seven, but it's still twenty four, which is uh, more than enough to make good use of this. If you want to go to the tracker ones over here, so this is a key tracker modulation. So if you wanted to assign your note pitch, so for example, um, actually no, let's go for velocity. So we click velocity on and we assign this, let's say we assign this to the amp there. Let's bring the amp down, click on T1 and assign it there. So now, And yeah, so now if we wanted to uh, adjust that, so if we wanted notes to only really kind of sing out when you really hammer them, you can change the curve like that. Let's say we wanted to assign the note pitch instead. So we change this to note pitch, and now all these notes up here will shine through, and all these ones will be lower in value because we've assigned this to that. Now the voice randomizer one, you can assign it to can assign it to uh, any parameter and it just picks random values based on the range of uh, the range of modulation that you've selected so it can be quite useful for adding unpredictable characteristics to uh, to your sound but if you really kind of want to control something I'd recommend just going for an LFO or a uh, voice envelope so just a uh, just to recap <clears throat> LFOs are the most common form of modulation and are typically used to continually modulate a parameter. So if you want to modulate a sound continuously back and forth, this will be the way to do it. Envelopes are a single use modulation that triggers at the start of a key hit and are good, to modulate, uh, are good for modulations that are characteristic to the sound itself. <clears throat> what I mean there is that if you want a pluck sound and you want to uh, really kind of adjust that top of the attack, an envelope would be really good to do that because you don't want it to continue that modulation back and forth. Uh, Massive X has a wider range of modulators, but Serum is arguably more accessible due to its customization. So I would describe the LFOs on Serum as being uh, superior to those on Massive X. 
simply due to that visual aspect and the customization. You know, you're able to create your own waveforms. You're not constricted to uh, presets. Um, <clears throat> and the same goes for the envelopes as well, although you do get the uh, visual aspect in Massive X2. So modulation is an excellent way of adding character to a sound. So next week, we're going to be looking at how to create a basic atmospheric pad using what we've learned so far. So we'll be creating an evolving sound that uh, evolves over time uh, using what we've learned from the oscillators, the filters, the envelopes, and the modulators as well. So the session will include a pad designed in both Serum and a pad designed in Massive X. But in the meantime, and I urge you to do this, try and create unique presets of your own. And uh, please, please, please be sure to send them in. I'm always happy and eager to look at what you guys are creating with the uh, knowledge that you've learned. So thank you for watching the video to the end. It's uh, always really really appreciated but the key thing is that you guys are learning stuff uh, from this uh, you know this is this is a course designed for you guys to get to know synthesizers so if there's anything in particular that you struggle with or you want to know more about just let me know and i will try to cover it as best as i possibly can if you have any recommendations or any feedback or if you just completely hated it then let me know in the comments um I do try to respond to every single one. Uh, I appreciate, obviously, uh, this course won't be for everyone. And again, I would like to stress I'm by no means an expert. I'm simply sharing along things which I understand myself. Uh, and yeah, I don't claim to be an expert user in in Serum or Massive X. I, I just think that uh, I'm in a good position to... I'm in a good position to give you guys some of the basic knowledge now that I'm past that stage myself. But anyways, yeah, please tune in for next week. It's going to be an absolutely crack of a session. We're going to be designing these pads in real time. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Thank you very much. I'll see you later.